the Brain Simulator 2, considering the capabilities and limitations of neurons. For me, it is important that an AGI design be plausible as representing a biological model. This is not to say that other forms of intelligence are impossible, but from an engineering perspective, it is likely that AGI will emerge first from some representation of a biological brain in the same way that airplanes emerged after a study of birds. Now we have spaceships which have little in common with birds, but the bird wing analogy came first. AGI will probably emerge the same way. So let's start with something neurons are really good at and then move to a few things neurons are not so good at. The capability that is the favorite of those familiar with AI, individual neurons can recognize input patterns. Neurons can do plenty of other things, but this single capability is the basis for virtually all neural network software, and so is the basis for today's AI boom. Imagine your brain needs to recognize something, for example, a face. Parts of your brain analyze the input image received from your eyes and discern various attributes like color, shape, size, etc. From these attributes, your brain finds the closest match in its collection of stored faces and can also return the confidence that the correct face is recognized. To be a bit more abstract, let's imagine an arbitrary set of attributes. In this case, uppercase, digit, and lowercase. Any thing you see will have some combination of attributes. For example, A2C or C2D. Now we can connect low weight synapses from the attribute neurons to the thing neuron which possesses those attributes. In the brain simulator, we can see that the neuron representing the thing possessing most of these attributes will fire first and will fire faster depending on the accuracy of the match. This is a really efficient use of neurons because the array of neurons executes its closest match search completely in parallel. But this model relies on the attributes having no order and arriving in parallel. Let's consider sequential or ordered information, something that neurons are not so good at. The order of sounds you hear is important to the words you understand. The order of words is important to their meaning. Concepts of cause and effect and time would be impossible without sequential information. So the ability to handle ordered information is a key element of AGI. Let's consider the ability of remembering a US phone number consisting of 10 digits. Remember these two numbers as I'll use them in the subsequent examples. Our network will need to be able to recognize a phone number and repeat it back. We could consider the number to be a thing with 10 digit attributes. In this case, the thing can't be a single neuron on its own. Let's start with the output side of the problem first. Here I'm using the brain simulator's speech out to represent individual One. digits. Two, three. To speak a phone number, we need to handle the order of the digits and the likelihood of repeating digits. One, two, three. So we need to have sequences of neurons which represent the order of the attributes in the sequence, like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So for the phone number, in addition to the digit neurons, which can be shared among all phone numbers, we need additional neurons for each step in the sequence, like this. Zero, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. On the input side, we need a similar set of neurons and synapses. 
If the neuron at the end of the stored sequence ever fires, then a match has been detected. It seems likely that such a network is roughly equivalent to a trained recurrent neural network, and it would be interesting if someone with expertise in that area could create a network storing 10-digit sequences and determine how that model would store 10 or 100 phone numbers, for example. We software people tend to ignore the inconvenience of storing sequences with neurons because our computers are so good at sequences. Consider a table of some numeric sequence like this. We might see the sequence of eight numbers and ignore this invisible implied column which defines the order of the table. The information contained in the left column exists whether or not it is explicitly stored or displayed. We tend not to think about the value of this implicit ordering of information until we work with neurons and that information is gone, unless we explicitly add the synapses and neurons needed to represent it. So putting this all together, here is a neuron array which listens for phrases and repeats them back if they are already heard and stored. Computer, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. It works by spreading the phrase out in an array of neurons, and the neurons at the center of the screen store a snapshot of the input array on the left side of the screen. If it recognizes that snapshot being received again, it can play it back on the right-hand side of the screen. Computer, 0987654321. Another approach to this problem stores just the sequences. It doesn't use as many neurons to set up and decode the data, but it uses more neurons to store the sequence. Computer 1231231234 1231234 1231234 Computer 0987654321 0987654321 In both these networks, I have taken shortcuts to simplify the design, and a more general solution would require even more neurons per attribute in the sequence. You can see that both these methods are much more complex and inefficient than the parallel model presented at the beginning of this video. What does this mean for estimates of the human brain's capacity? Considering sequential data has a huge impact on estimates of the brain's capacity because storing useful information in every possible synapse becomes impossible. Multiplying the possible information states of the synapse by the number of synapses would only be reasonable for the most efficient possible information storage. In the same way, I could say that a transistor can have 256 different measurable states. My CPU has 3.8 billion transistors, therefore the storage capacity of my CPU must be 3.8 gigabytes, which is also a vast overstatement. When we consider that most of the information our brains process is ordered in some way, the estimated capacity of the brain is reduced by several orders of magnitude, and near-term AGI becomes more likely. For more on this timely topic, read my new book, Will Computers Revolt? Preparing for the Future of Artificial Intelligence. Available now at Amazon and book retailers worldwide in paperback, hardcover, and ebook editions.